If you're new to mediation, you may believe it's just a variation on what you have already tried. But mediation differs from what you might think. Mediation helps you structure your conversation about difficult issues and uncover what's really important. It gives you and the other party a better chance to deal with differences productively and jointly decide how to move forward. In this video, you will learn from our guest mediator how mediation works and your role in it. Hello, my name is Diane. Welcome. Before I get into the mediation process, let me tell you a little about myself. I've been trained in the processes and techniques of mediation. I adhere to professional standards of conduct, and I have experience working with the kinds of workplace disputes you may have experienced. As a neutral, I won't decide outcomes, but will help you and the other party make decisions toward resolving your issues. For most workplace mediations, there will be three people in the room, a management representative, an employee, and a mediator. Though your interests are different, your roles at the table are the same, to work toward a mutually satisfactory resolution. My role as a mediator is to create a setting in which you both can talk honestly and respectfully about your issues and interests and how to satisfy them. Facilitative mediators are neutral. They will not take sides, offer opinions, or exert pressure towards specific outcomes. That is up to you. Mediators are conflict and process experts. You are the expert of your own experiences and interests. When you take part in mediation, you usually work together in joint sessions and sometimes in separate sessions with the mediator called caucuses. The mediation session follows a sequence that moves from the mediator's opening statement to the party's opening statements, to option building in joint discussion or caucus, and then closing. I will talk more about caucuses later. Right now, let's take a closer look at the mediation sequence. The mediator's purpose in their opening statement is to put you and the other party at ease by providing an overview as to what will happen and when, helping you define ground rules so you can participate productively, and securing your commitment to participate in good faith by your signature on the agreement to mediate. Next, the mediator invites you and the other party to explain, in turn, your view of what's happened and what you want to achieve through mediation. Your statements help isolate the issues and underlying interest and to clarify what you each have at stake. As parties tell their stories, mediators expect to hear various emotions. Anxiety, frustration, and anger are common. What mediators call venting diffuses built-up emotions and enables parties to move on and to think creatively about future-oriented solutions. Mediators acknowledge the emotion, but also keep the discussion on track. This is the part of mediation when you work on solutions. The mediator encourages brainstorming to get ideas flowing, even if, at first, some seem unworkable or unacceptable. The ideas themselves generate more ideas. What seems unworkable reveals underlying problems that need to be solved. For example, if training is a solution but the budget is tight, where else can you go for money? What cost-free courses are available? The goal here is not to reject the idea, but to work through complications. Mediations move toward closure when there are enough workable options that satisfy both you and the other party, or when you no longer believe it's possible to find them. When you are in agreement, the mediator helps you craft language to define the terms you have agreed on. The terms must be actionable and clear about who will be responsible, how the terms will be accomplished, and how parties will know they have been accomplished. In Air Force workplace mediations, agreements are not final until they have been reviewed by legal and other offices appropriate to the dispute. The sequence I have just described does not always flow in a straight line, but each part is usually recognizable. There are other elements in mediation. Let's look at a few of the most common ones. Ground rules help parties remain respectful and productive, even when emotions are high, and they ensure both parties can participate fully and equally. Separate sessions or caucuses offers parties the chance to raise issues or test options they are not comfortable raising in the presence of others. Confidentiality 
is a fundamental principle of mediation. With some exceptions, mediators cannot share information revealed in the mediation with anyone who is not present without the permission of the party or parties who revealed it. Suspending mediations may be proposed for reasons such as unanticipated disruptions, the need for additional time or information, or a partial impasse. Thank you for your interest in learning about mediation. We've covered the basics of how the process works, but each session is different and you may have questions. Process questions such as who else can participate and what are their roles? Or questions about your own obligations such as what can I talk about that comes out of mediation? To get answers to these questions and others like them, download the Mediation Process Frequently Asked Questions and view other segments of the At the Table series. Additional information is also available from the Air Force NDR program.